a discussion, this is Professor Farhad, in which we would look at the price earning multiples or the price earning ratio, or simply put, price divided by earning. This is the most widely quoted ratio in the real world. So if you listen to CNBC, Bloomberg Radio, read the Wall Street Journal, Business Insider, any of these outlet, they will mention the PE ratio day in and day out for many companies. Now, as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's the price of the stock divided by the future earnings, and specifically earnings is EPS, the future earnings of the company. Now, in this session, we're going to break it down. We're going to explain how do we construct this ratio. Although it looks, it appears simple, it is simple from this perspective, but it's very important to understand what's behind the ratio. How did we come up with this PE ratio and what does that mean? What is a PE ratio of 10 versus 20 versus 15 means to you? Before I start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have plenty of resources. And on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources, whether you are a finance, accounting, especially if you're studying for your CPA, or taking accounting courses, or taking the CPA exam. Also, if you want to know how well is your university performing on the CPA exam, you could check out, I have this data. So let's go ahead and get started to figure out where the PE ratio is coming from. First, to be able to compute the PE ratio, we need to estimate earnings per share. Once you, once you hear the word E estimate, it means estimate could be wrong. So that's one of the weakness of the PE ratio. It's based on future estimate. Now, how do we estimate earning? Well, we have to estimate sales. We have to estimate cost of goods sold. We have to estimate, you know, operating expenses. We have to estimate taxes, depreciation. Then we find earnings. So there's a lot of estimation that goes on. So this is one of the weakness. And those, all these estimates are based on accounting rules. And if you don't know anything about accounting, if you know, if you don't know anything, I will tell you one thing under gap, you can, you can treat revenues, expenses, costs in, in, in very different ways. So managers can easily manipulate this EPS. The other issue with the PE ratio is deciding on an appropriate multiple. What do we mean by appropriate multiple? Let's assume we have a stock price that's trading at $50 and the company in the future will earn $2 per share. Well, 50 divided by 2 equal to 25. So the multiple, uh, the multiple is $25. It means you are paying for to pay $50, you are paying $50 for the share. What are you buying? You are buying their future earning. So for every dollar in earning, you are paying $25. So you have $1 in earning, $2 in earning. Those are the $2 and that's $50. This is what it means. Now, is this a high multiple or a low multiple? It all depends on the company prospect. If the company in the future is going to grow, what we do, let's assume it's a technology company. And what happened is they have a bright future. They're going to gain more market share because they have a new innovation. So what's going to happen is if that's the case, then rather than 25, what we need to do, what we need to do, if the, if, if the company is making $2 per share, $2 per share, the 25 may not be an appropriate multiple. Maybe the multiple is 30. Therefore, the price becomes $60. So although kind of we kind of figure out this is multiple of 25, but if we think there's growth, more growth in the company, if we think the multiple should be 30, we should, then the stock price should be 60. Actually, it's a good buy now. If you think the multiple is 30, if you think the multiple is 30, then you should buy the stock because it's only trading at 50 and eventually the market will realize that's the case. So let's go back to the basics of what we learned here and we'll come back and we'll revisit those PE ratio with real, real world examples. I have a few examples for you. So if you remember, we learned about the price of the company P0 equal to the expected earning divided by K, which is the required rate of return. And we, we learned that this component of the equation called the no growth value per share. So earning divided by K is the no growth earning. It means with no growth, the company will be valued at that much, dividing those two figures together. Now, if the company is going to grow, we add to that the present value of growth opportunities and the no growth plus the growth opportunities equal to the price per share. Now, the PE ratio is basically P0 divided by E1, the price today divided by E1, it's gonna give us this multiple. 
multiple. Now, all that we have to do now is rearrange the formula, rearrange this formula. And if we rearrange this formula, we'll come up with this formula. Now, you could rearrange the formula on your own, but I could assure you, I don't want to take two, three minutes to re rearrange the formula. You will come up with PE ratio, the price P0 divided by the future earning equal to one divided by K times one plus the present value of the of the growth opportunity divided by earnings divided by K. So this is basically, we went from this formula to this formula. All what we did is we rearranged the formulas, taking four or five steps to come up to this. Let me show you how this works. Let's assume the forward PE ratio of Google is 23.54 in mid-2017. If the market capitalization K is about 10%, is about 10%, here's what we can do. We can figure out what's the no growth and what's the growth component of this of the stock or Yes, of the P-E ratio, not the stock, the P-E ratio. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to take the number 1 divided by K, 1 divided by 10, multiplied by the number 1 plus the present value of the growth opportunity divided by the present value um, of assets in place, which is um, e, divide, e divided by K. That's going to give us 23.54. If we solve for the formula, we come up with that this component here, this component here equal to 1.35, 1.35. So this whole component here in, in, per, in the bracket is 2.35. Simply put, we have 10%, well, well, not 10%, 1 divided by 0.1 equal to $10. $10 times 2.35 will give us $23.54. What does that mean? It means the PE ratio, the, the, the majority of the growth of uh, Google stock it, the, the majority of the growth is due to this component right here, the growth component, not the no growth component. The, the no growth component is only is only 10. The growth component is the remaining, which is 13.54, which is it's 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 a bigger um, a bigger component. OK, so notice a company like Google will have high P.E. ratio, not very high, but it's relatively high because it has future prospect. So the PE ratio reflect the market optimism concerning a firm's growth prospect. So how much are they going to grow? The higher the PE ratio, the higher is the growth opportunity. Assuming you believe the, grow the growth is going to actually occur. So an analyst must decide wh whether they are more or less optimistic than the belief implied by the market multiple. If they are more optimistic, they would recommend buying the stock. So here's what happened if you recommend buying the stock. Let's assume a company like uh, like Tesla. Maybe it's earning for the sake of simplicity $2 per share. And here's what's going to happen. Uh, if the price right now is 100, 100 divided by 2 equal to 50. So the multiple is 50. If investors think Tesla in the future, they will have more earning. If they have more earning, it means they should have higher multiple. Then what they do is they drive the price up to 200. Once they drive the price up to 200 divided by two, the multiple becomes 100. So when you drive the price up, the, supposedly that you drive the price up before the earnings because you want to buy the stock before they report the earning. After the earning, it's too late. The 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 price already reflect that earning. So you want to uh, buy the price before. So so what happened is we noticed that companies like Tesla, companies like Netflix and FLX, they will have a high PE ratio because the anticipation is they're going to have more in the denominator. Therefore, if they're going to have more earnings, the numerator will increase now, not when they have the earning. You want to be in front of the earnings, not behind the earning. For example, a company like Netflix, Netflix used to have PE ratio of 400, okay? Um, I, I, who am I kidding? 800 at some point, okay? Now the PE ratio is 78, so it's, it's still growing. <laughs> Just to kind of give you a comparison, the normal ratio over for the S&P 500 on average for over the past, you know, 50 years is between 15, 10 to 15, let's say 10 to 15 as a range to 20 to 25. So let's say low end 10, high end 25. This is the normal. This is the normal range, the overall average. So you could imagine that 78. So you simply put, to buy Netflix today, and Netflix went down today because they reported yesterday and they did not, you know, they did not report, uh, th their future subscription is not as ex as as as, uh, as optimistic as uh, investors thought, so the stock price dropped. Otherwise, this ratio was higher yesterday, okay? So now the stock price went down 
3.9% today. This is around 2.50 p.m. on what's today's date, October the 22nd, 2020. So simply put, if you notice uh, Netflix uh, is the high, so when you buy for Netflix, you are paying a lot of money for Netflix. You are paying a lot of money for their earnings, which is what? <laughs> uh, where's the earnings, earnings date? Uh, beta, this is beta, yeah, yeah. $6.19. For the $6.19, the future earning, you are paying 78 times. So if you take 78.35 times 6.19, will give you the stock price. So the earnings right now, the PE is 78. If somebody think Netflix should have a higher PE ratio, if they think they should have 100, then, then 100 times 6.19, the price should be $619. So it all depends on what do you think is going to happen to Netflix, although Netflix is still growing. For example, a company like Alphabet, this is, you know, at the same time as well, they have a PE ratio of 35. Again, Google, which is Alphabet, Google is going to call it Google, it used to have a very high PE ratio until they started to earn now they're earning $45.49 per share and investors think a multiple of 35 is appropriate or at least that's what the market thinks today let's assume google they're, they're going to have a cure for covid right they're, they're, they're researching something about curing covid right let's assume that's the case then what happened automatically the multiple will go up then say oh the multiple should be 100 if the multiple should be 100 then we're talking 100 times uh, $45.49. Now we're talking about $4,500 stock, okay? But if they have nothing to, they, they have no abnormal growth, then, you know, they're going to grow and the multiple is appropriate 35. Notice Apple will have also a multiple of 35. So simply put, but we're saying Apple and Google, Apple and Google, they have a, uh, you are paying, they're basically, in a sense, if you think about it, although, although you think Google is more expensive than Apple because it has a price of $1,600, 616 not at all they are both practically almost the same price for every dollar in earning you're paying 35 dollars and 52 cent for every dollar in earning you're paying 35 dollars and 10 cent for apple this is how you value a stock based on the on the multiple so this is why the pe is important because it tells you if you think apple is going to have higher growth then you will command more multiple. So you pay more for their future earning because, because you think in the future that 330 is not appropriate. It should be $5. So let's assume, let's assume you want to keep at 35, but you think earnings will be five. And if you take 35 times five, this should be the new price for Apple. So whatever that price is. So that's 30 times five is 150, 150, five times five is 25. So you, you think the price should be 175 if Apple can earn $5 with an appropriate multiple of 35. So for every dollar, you should pay $35 for future earnings, okay? So that's how you look at the PE ratio. Also, we can look at the PE ratio from another formula that we learned, and this is the constant growth dividend, dividend model, which is the price of a stock equal to the future dividend times K minus G. The K is the required rate of return minus the growth rate. Now, recall that dividend equal to the earnings that are not reinvested in the firm, of course. So what is dividend equal to? What, what can we replace this? What can we replace this with, this part? Dividend equal to the expected earning times one minus B. Remember, B is the plowback. So whatever, whatever, whatever you don't keep, you pay in dividend. So that's why it's the earning times, let's assume, um, this is 60%, so you take the earning times 0.4, which is 1 minus 0 0.6, is 0.4, is D1, which is the dividend, so D equal to that. Also, we know that G, to compute G, will take ROI, return on equity, times the plowback. The plowback is what you keep times ROI. Now, we could substitute for D and G, because we can take this G and substitute this G, and this is the formula for G. We can substitute G and we can substitute D. Let's see how things would look like. So simply put, we can say the price of a stock equal to the future earning times one minus the plowback, whatever, which is which is D1, okay, divided by K minus uh, K, which is the required rate of return, minus G, which is G reflected on ROI times the plowback rate. Now, again, we could manipulate this formula and we'll end up with the price earnings equal to one minus the plowback one minus the plowback ratio divided by K minus ROI min times B. Why are we doing all of this? Well, why are we doing all of this? Because if we can, we can easily verify now 
that the PE ratio increase with ROE. So if you plug in some numbers and you could increase return on equity, and hopefully this makes sense. If you increase your return on equity, you're going to have a higher PE ratio, a higher multiple. Why? Because people are willing to pay for your, for your company because you have opportunity to earn more than the required rate of return. Uh, this makes sense because high R ROI project uh, pro project give firms good opportunities for growth. We also can verify that the PE ratio increases with a higher plowback. Now, if you can keep more money, that's not only that, as long as ROE exceeds K and you keep that money, you'll keep the money and you could make more than what, what's required rate of return, then you should be better off. So it's not only higher B, higher plowback, higher plowback, as long as you can earn more than the required rate of return. Hopefully this makes sense as well. Okay, so when a firm has good inv investment opportunities, the market would re would reward it with higher PE multiple. If you have project, if you have product on the horizon, investors are willing to pay for your company more, which will increase your multiple. Okay, if it exploits those opportunities more aggressively by plowing back more earning into these opportunities, you put money back into the company, you have project to earn money, the investors will reward you ahead of time. Okay, now let's take a look at a quick example just to kind of make sure we can we can do the basic computation for these. ABC stock has an expected ROE of 12. So ROE equal to return on equity is 12. Expected earning, expected earning E of 1 equal to $2. And the ex, uh, expected dividend of $1.50. So D1 equal to $1.50 per share. It's market capitalization K equal to 10%. What is the expected growth rate? So first, do you know the formula for the expected growth rate, which is B? This is the, uh, not, not, not B, sorry. Expected expected growth rate uh, is, uh, is G, not B. <laughs> expected growth rate is G. What is G? G equal to ROE times B. Okay, so do we have ROE? Yes, we do, 12%. Do we have B? B is the plow back. How much do we keep? Well, let's 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 see if we could find this out. If we're going to be making two dollars, and of that two dollars, we're going to be making two dollars. We're going to pay dividend of dollar fifty. It means what does that mean? It means we're keeping fifty cent. So if we take fifty pennies divided by two dollars, fifty divided by two, it's going to give us a rate of twenty five percent. So twelve times twenty five percent. Now we have the growth rate G equal to three percent. So we just computed G. What is the stock price of what's this what's the price well what is the price of the uh, what's the price the price equal to d1 which is we do have we do have d d1 times times k minus g do we have k we do have k and we do have g let's plug everything so p0 the price of the stock equal to dollar 50 times k is giving 10 minus g minus 3 this is 0 0.1 0 0.03 so if we do that we find that the stock price should equal to 21 dollars and 43 cent okay and what's the pe ratio now we have the price 21.43 and what's the future earnings future earning is 2 so this is p0 divided by e1 the future earnings we find out that you are paying a multiple of 10.71 i mean 10.71, what does that mean? If we compare this multiple to Apple and Google, guess what? Apple and Google, they have a better prospect than this company. They have a better prospect. And obviously, Netflix has better prospect than this company as well. So what, who would have a low PE? Low PE it doesn't mean it's not good. Simply put, it means you're, if we buy your, what we're doing, when we buy your stock for every dollar in earnings, we are paying $10 per share. That's all what we're saying. Why are we paying $10 per share? Because this is how much we think you are worth. You're, in your industry or uh, your company should be should have a multiple of 10. Now, how do I know it's a multiple of 10 is good? Well, you have to compare to, you know, how well do you have, do you have any growth opportunities? If you do, I'll pay more. So this is why your stock will go up, okay? And if, if you don't, if, you know, if I don't believe that, if you want to drive the stock price up, just let's assume 10, Let's assume 10, and let's assume the market is not really treating you well. All you have to do, earn $3. If rather than two, earn three, then the stock price will be, you know, three times 10 is 30. 
and three times seven is to ten so it's like it'll be around thirty two dollars and ten cents so if you don't give me a higher multiple that's fine you're gonna miss out i'm gonna have more earning but if i think you're gonna have higher earnings i don't wait until you have the higher earning i'll pay higher multiple for you for your company so this is basically um how the pe ratio work again i'm gonna I'm going to invite you to like this recording, share it. And if you are a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Especially if you're taking accounting, I have finance courses, CPA exam. You could always donate if you choose to. Thank you very much. Stay safe and good luck.